Dave, I lived 20 years off and on on the streets, homeless. I was certified insane in three states, but praise God, I finally found Jesus and he transformed my life. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. Folks, I grew up in a church that taught that the miracle working power of God ceased in the first century with the death of the last apostle. Now that, my friends, is a doctrinal position that simply cannot be maintained for a number of reasons. The most important being that God continues today to perform mighty miracles in transforming the lives of those who have put their faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. The person who has been the featured singer on this television program since we started broadcasting in 2002 is a classic example of the miracle working power of God. Jack Hollinsworth was a man who lived on the streets for 20 years in an alcoholic and drug haze until he met the Lord Jesus Christ in 1988. His life was totally transformed by that encounter. It was so transformed that he became the founder of a Christian ministry called Acts 29. And he and his wife Sally began traveling the nation singing, teaching, preaching, and counseling for Jesus. I am sorry to report that Jack died suddenly and unexpectedly in November of 2017. And this program is a tribute to his memory. Welcome back to our tribute to the memory of Jack Hollinsworth, the man who served as the featured singer on this program for the past 15 years. Jack was born in Mississippi in 1947, and he died in Florida in 2017 at the age of 70. In December of 2002, on the 14th broadcast of this ministry, I interviewed Jack Hollinsworth and his wife Sally. At that time they had been ministering together for 10 years, and they had ministered with me many times at meetings and conferences all across America. Here now is some footage from that program that was broadcast 15 years ago. Welcome to Christ in Prophecy. I'm Dave Reagan, Senior Evangelist, and we have a very, very special program for you. Uh, a different one. We normally focus all our time on studying Bible prophecy, but uh, in this program we want to introduce you to a very special ministry and to two wonderful people who constitute that ministry. The ministry's name is Acts 29, and the two people are two very dear friends of mine, Jack and Sally Hollinsworth. Glad to have you all on the program. Dave, we're glad to be here. And thanks for driving in all the way from Mississippi to be here. Yeah. Now, I didn't say that right, did I? No, you didn't. You have to say Mississippi. And you're a, you're a native, aren't you? I was born So, there. you know how to do it. Yes. Mississippi. Mississippi. Well, Sally, where are you from? <laughs> Originally from Illinois. From Illinois. A Yankee? Yes. You know, we, we like to kid you, Sally, because I, we have all kinds of nicknames for you. I always think of you as the little Mack truck because you, you're, you're small, but you're tough. And, and we're going to find out more about that in the program. But I also uh, sometimes call you shotgun because you're only 4'10". That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack, is it really true that you lived on the streets for 20 years? Yes, Trey. It's true. Almost 20 years off and on. Is that all over the United States or are we talking about Mississippi here? Uh, no, I was over the southeast. Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Florida, Texas. Wow. Yeah. Well, Jack, we're showing a picture right now of what you looked like during those 20 years on the streets. And oh, when my. people see that picture and they see you now, <laughs> there's only one conclusion. There has been a major transformation in your life. And that's what we're going to share with these people this evening. I mean a radical transformation, right? Absolutely. It reminds me of something that I read about in the uh, Word of God over in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 10. You know, it wasn't until 1967 that the first heart transplant was done by Christian Bernard in South Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the Bible reveals that God's been in the heart transplant business since the beginning Amen. of time. Amen. And in 1 Samuel chapter 10, a prophet said to Samuel, a, a, a prophet said to uh, Saul, he said, you're going to be changed into another man. And when Saul turned to walk away, it says, then it happened that when he turned his back to leave, God changed his heart. He gave him a heart transplant right there. And you got one too, didn't you? I sure can identify with that. Now I just want to get right to the core of this thing by asking you a question. 
How in the world did you end up living on the streets for 20 years? Now, I say that because we see homeless people all the time, and I think the average yeah. response of a person to seeing someone homeless on the streets is there's a no good bum who's too lazy to work, uh, they've, uh, they're running away from life or whatever, I don't know. Uh, the, the attitude is really uh, very negative. Yeah. How did you end up on the streets? Well, Dave, that uh, attitude, I think, is yes and no. Uh, you're right and wrong in that. I think there's some who are and some who aren't. But uh, it's a long story with me. I, I wasn't wanted before I was born. And uh, after I was born, and my father died when I was four years old, and my mother remarried. And my stepfather was very brutal, very, very violent. Uh, he beat me. Uh, and I spent my life in fear. And I learned how to be angry very young. And uh, I was full of hatred. And when I was 15 years old, I was out at the river with a bunch of young boys and somebody brought some beer. And I drank some beer and uh, just messing around and it, it did something for me that nothing else had ever done. You thought you were Superman. I did. <laughs> I was 10 feet tall and bulletproof. <laughs> bulletproof. <laughs> uh, handsome and charming too. <laughs> but uh, but it, it just, things were changed and I thought I'd found what I was looking for. But. Uh, you managed to make it through school. Yeah, I managed to make it through school. And uh, after I got out of school and I, and I got out of my, my, my family's home, and uh, I found out that I wasn't prepared to deal with life and I just couldn't cope with it. So drinking and alcohol took on a, a, a big portion of my life and I started drinking more and more and I, and I couldn't keep jobs. I, uh, I was just at, at a loss. And uh, some people that I counted on and believed in, they had me committed to a mental hospital. And in that mental hospital is where I found out what drugs were. Oh. I went in there depressed yeah. and angry and uh, full of fear, but I came out psychotic. Uh, and uh, because I started mixing alcohol with drugs, and I just, I just, it, it spiraled down into it. In all just, this time that you were living on the streets, did, did you ever have anybody share the Lord with you? I hated God, I thought. Uh, there's never been a time in my life that I didn't believe in God. Uh, because I, I, I thought he was the one who made me the way I was. Mm -hmm. I thought it was his fault that I was, I was where I was. And I, I just shake my fist at the sky and curse at God. And I mean, I didn't curse at God. I cussed God. I, I screamed at him. I blamed him. I hated him. I thought, and I, I hated people like you. Yeah. Uh, and when somebody you, would talk to me about Jesus, I'd, I'd either run or, 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 or cuss at would him. It, would, did you just feel that God didn't love you? Oh, I was convinced that he didn't love me. Uh, I knew that he didn't because... Sally, you, you <clears throat> spent a lot of years in uh, counseling and uh, with homeless people and alcoholics. Uh, was this a, uh, an attitude you found? It's uh, very common when people are rejected real young in life and we, everybody has a story. Somebody's, everybody out there in the streets is somebody's son or daughter or husband or wife or but friend. But is it common to project that, that rejection <clears throat> on God? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Well, the thing of it is when people believe in God and they know there's a God, who else are they going to blame? Mm -hmm. They can't blame mm -hmm. the people because the people aren't there that hurt them. So. Well, Jack, how did you how did you support yourself during those years on the street? Did you just dig out of garbage cans, or did you steal things, or what? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I tell folks a lot of times it's easy to feed me because you know good food today is a good. I've got something to compare to because I did eat out of garbage cans and dumpsters. Uh, I'd beg, I'd steal. It didn't matter. Uh, uh, Police would pick me up and put me in jail, and that was that was a relief. I remember you told me one time about a fellow who really befriended you and really. Uh, treated you like decently, and you turned around and stole something from him. It reminded me of the story of Les Miserables, where he brings in the fella, and the fella steals the, the candlesticks, and then comes back, and, yeah. and he says, I gave them to him. Yeah. Now, tell us about that story. Absolutely. And that was here in Texas, yeah. as a matter of fact. Uh, I was running, and I was running from God, and uh, this old gentleman was sitting on a porch of an old country store, and I, I went in and, and had a couple little change, and I bought some beer, and uh, I don't know, another guy with me, and he said, you boys look like you kind of road weary and tired. He said, would you like to rest a while? And we said, sure. And uh, he and put he us... up stealing from him. Yeah. And uh, he put us in a trailer that he was working on. And we walked in that trailer, and he said, I've got some things I need to do. So he said, you boys make yourselves at home, clean up, and take you a nap, and get you some rest. And the place was full of power tools, and, and there was a big can of uh, change in there, a big three or four-pound coffee can full of change. It must have had $100 in it. Uh, saws, drills, hammers, I mean, power tools and everything. And we looked around there and I said, man, we, you know, we can take this stuff and, 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 and make some money out of it. So we grabbed it and left. Despite the fact this man had befriended you. 
It didn't matter to me. I, I was a people user. I didn't care about that man uh, or anybody else. But it uh, wasn't far down the road that, uh, well, let, let me back up just a little bit. Because when we were leaving, I looked back and he was pulling in his driveway. And I knew we were in trouble. <laughs> and it wasn't long before the Texas State Troopers were all over us. And uh, he came down and he looked at the troopers and they had me handcuffed and, and I was ready. I was gone. I knew I was gone because you steal from somebody in Texas and uh, I knew <laughs> no, that. We don't take that. Too well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, and I was up for some time, but I don't know why, but, but that older, that old gentleman came up to them and he said, no, he said, you let these boys go. He said, all I want is my stuff back. Wow. And uh, they Isn't said, no, we've so. got them now. You don't have to uh, press charges. He said, we'll get them in the state because we've caught him with stolen property. This is your property? He said, yes. He said, then we've got him. And I don't know how he did it, but he took him off to the side and he talked to him and, and he convinced him to turn us loose. But that didn't turn your life around, did it? Absolutely not. Because it took Jesus no. Christ to do that. It took something more and than we'll anybody. we'll hear about that in just a moment. Yeah. Folks, you are watching excerpts from a television program that we broadcast in December 2002, a program that featured Jack Hollinsworth and his wife, Sally. Jack served as the featured singer on this program for 15 years until his death in November of 2017. This program is a tribute to his memory. Let's return now to the interview we conducted with Jack and his wife, Sally, 15 years ago. Now, Jack, uh, we want to find out how you came to meet the Lord. and. Um, I know that one key element of that was when you got to the end of yourself uh, one night and decided to commit suicide. Well, that was after many times. Of, uh, many of, times. Of I know you jumped off a bridge yeah. one time jumped, missed the river. Missed the river. <laughs> 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 that, that shows how, how successful all my plans were. My best thinking, my best planning just didn't well, Tell get us it. about this particular night. Well, I'd run and uh, I'd ended up in Lexington, Kentucky. And I had a couple of dollars in my pocket, and uh, I went into a little store and, and bought me two bottles of rubbing alcohol and a mouth. Rubbing beer. alcohol? Rubbing alcohol. I knew it'd either kill me, or it would uh, just just fry me to, yeah. you know, to to a vegetable state. And I crawled under an old truck in a parking lot that I found, and uh, I kept drinking that rubbing alcohol. Oh, it's horrible. I can remember it to this very day. And uh, passing out, but I kept waking up, uh, and I just I just couldn't die. And the next morning when I woke up, I was so sick, I had just turned green. Very and I was stumbling around town. <laughs> and uh, that's when I had stumbled into a, a place there in Lexington, and it was uh, a detox, the only non-medical detox within 100 miles of there. Yeah, but there's something you forgot to tell us before that. What kind of truck were you under? Well, that came after I got saved, actually, but God took me back to that place, and He was showing me the things that He had done for me, and what the Lord had showed me there was that when I'd crawled into that truck, and I, I, he, he just took me back where I could see it, and I saw that on the side of that truck was Salvation Army. <laughs> and the Lord spoke to me right then, and He said, Son, don't you know that you can't crawl under salvation and die? Wow. Oh, man, <laughs> and, uh, what a story. Okay, so, so you went to a detox center, and mm -hmm. there you met a very special person. Sure did. Little Yankee girl that I didn't like. <laughs> didn't like her a bit. And she okay, 410, tell us about that. <laughs> she wasn't crazy about me. He well, <laughs> he came into the detox center, and from the very beginning, I knew he was somebody special to God. Mm -hmm. He just, sometimes you meet people that just don't fit, and he was one of those. Mm -hmm. And he was afraid to sleep at night, so he always ended up in my office. Of course, we kept the cigarettes and lighter in there. We didn't turn them loose on the <laughs> unit with him, so he had to come in there and get his cigarettes, and, and he would sit in there and talk. And we would talk about everything. It was very obvious that he was very intellectual, and and um, the, you know he would talk about how people told him about his potential, and he said, "Yeah, if I can never get out of the gutter, I'll show you my potential." Mm -hmm. And so we would talk, and he went through the programs, and he still wasn't saved. But he, he went real good for about a year. He was working with a rehab program that they had there in Lexington. And then he decided to try to get drunk again. And I had already shared with him that he was never going to be able to get drunk again. You'd already told him that, huh? Yes, yeah. I told him that. That's, <laughs> that's what the Lord told me to tell him. It yeah. was in faith. And he tried for two weeks to get drunk, and he couldn't get drunk. That's true. And that's sure. a whole other story that we don't have time for. But uh, anyway, he came back, and on December 5th, he came back, and that's when... The Lord led me to give him the scripture, and I let him tell that. Yeah. Yeah, this was late at night. I decided to just get up and leave. I was fixing to run again. 
I was headed for the highway, but uh, God got me back down to detox, and I, they checked me in. And I was sitting there, and this was, like I said, this was on December the 5th, 1988. And on December the 8th, about 3 o'clock in the morning, I was sitting back in her office. And uh, Sally had a little Bible that she'd carried with her since she was in the fifth grade. I told you she was weird. I mean, she'd had this Bible more years than, than I could ever imagine anybody having anything. But she gave it to me. I was sitting in a chair then in her office, and she handed it to me. It had been opened up to John 14, 6. And she said, Jack, I want you to read this and read it out loud. And I started reading that, and, John, and when Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through me. And something in my heart started breaking. And for the first time in, in many, many years, I started crying. I just couldn't help it. I just started weeping. I wasn't just crying. I, I mean, just, I was, I was, I was uncontrolled. And, uh, and that crying, all I could say was, Jesus, if there's anything you can do for me, please help me. <laughs> if there's anything. Because <laughs> really, I, I, I didn't think he would do anything for me. Right. I'd, I'd, I'd been too far, done too much. And number two, I didn't think he, he could do anything for me. I thought I was that person that would just, that had gone so too you far. discovered the grace of God. Absolutely. Instantly, miraculously, and absolutely. He changed my life right then. It wasn't a gradual change. It, and Jack, your life is a testimony to the fact that the, the Bible teaches over and over, there's no sin so great, so black, so terrible that can separate you from the love of God which Amen. is in Jesus Christ. None, none, none at all. Very quickly, tell us what happened shortly after that when you went to her house one day and she is well, washing dishes. The Lord started dealing with me, Dave. <laughs> And uh, he said, Sally's going to be your helpmate. Oh, and I dear. said, that's fine, Lord. She's, she's like helped her. me a lot. She, well, by that time, uh, I had a, grudge, a, a great respect for her and a grudging friendship. This has been, <laughs> this has been a period of two years you yep. know, that I was bouncing back and forth in that. And, uh, but the Lord was speaking to me. When I got saved, I went and got a job. I went and got a real job and, and got out of all the programs. And uh, so I was at work one day, and, and, and I'd gotten me a Bible when I'd got saved, and I'd been reading the Bible. And I remember reading in, in Genesis uh, 2.21, I think it was, and the Lord saw that it wasn't fit that, uh, no, that's not Genesis 2. But anyway, the Lord saw that it wasn't fit for, for man to be alone, so He made Adam a helpmate. And that, that keyed me right there, and I said, no, no, no she's not, Lord. <laughs> and I, and, uh, but He kept dealing with me, so I just asked my boss one day after work, uh, at, well, after lunch, if I could get off work early, and I went over to her house and I knocked on her door. Of course, she said, "Come in," and I went back in her house and she was in her kitchen. And I said, "God's been dealing with me, and I think He's been dealing with you. Are you ready to go get married?" <laughs> and her, in her little way, she just stepped back from the kitchen sink because she'd been washing the dishes and kind of wet. And she said, "No, but if you give me a minute, I'll change and we'll go." <laughs> and, well, praise God. <laughs> you want to make sure that's God, though. <laughs> and that's Jack. I've heard you sing many songs because we've ministered together all over this nation. But yes. the one that always touches my heart the most deeply, because it really is your story, is that great song, It's My Desire. Yes. Folks, here is Jack Hollingsworth singing, It's My Desire. What is your desire? What do you long for in your relationship with Jesus Christ? Well, listen, this is how I feel. It's my desire to live for Jesus. It's my desire to be like Him, though oft I fail. Brought him such shame, but it's my desire to live for him. It's my desire to help someone. Today, someone who may have failed to see the way right to once was so lost, 
But I found my way to God. Now it's my desire to live for Him. If you could see where Jesus brought me from to where I am today, then you would know the reason why I love him so. Well, you can take this world all its way and its riches I don't need its power but it's my desire to live for If you could see where Jesus brought me from to where I am today. Wow. And people say God no longer performs miracles. Jack and Sally married in 1988 and in 1993 they founded a ministry called Acts 29. And for the next 24 years they traveled all over America ministering for Jesus. Several years ago our great video team recorded six of Jack's most popular songs and creatively edited them to produce a video album called Jack Sings. I'd like to conclude this tribute to Jack by playing for you my favorite song from that album. It is called We Shall See Jesus. As 
That's what I call a powerful Christian song sung with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Well, folks, that's our program for this week. I hope it's been a blessing to you, and I hope you'll be back with us again next week, the Lord willing. Until then, this is Dave Reagan speaking for Lamb and Lion Ministries saying, Look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. Were you blessed by the song, We Shall See Jesus? If you would like to hear more, just call the number you see on the screen to order a DVD album of Jack's beautiful voice, praising and worshiping our Lord. For a donation of $20 or more, you can be praising the Lord along with Jack. The album includes the song you just heard, as well as five other songs performed by Jack Hollingsworth and edited by the Lamb and Lion media team to produce a moving visual experience. Place your order today by calling the number you see on the screen between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday Central Standard Time. Ask for Jack Singh's album, item D41, for $20, including the cost of shipping. You may also place your order on our website at lamblion.com. Orders by mail should be addressed to Lamb and Lion Ministries, Post Office Box 919, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Please consider making a donation to Lamb and Lion Ministries so that we can continue broadcasting the message of Jesus' soon return. Thank you for watching Christ in Prophecy, and God bless you. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus. 